What is going on guys, DBG here. In this video, we are going to be doing episode number 13 of the No Money Spent Squad. And it's about time, but we are finally ready to upgrade this card. We finally have him upgraded. We've upgraded Daryl Armstrong. But also, there's another card we're looking to upgrade, and it's Rick Smith. We have to get another 35 rebounds, as well as 500 points. And I can probably do that in a day. Trust me, it's not that difficult to do. That's about 30 games max of Triple Threat Offline which I'll probably be doing that just grinding in my spare time. And we are very, very close to getting Desmond Mason up to a diamond. We are really close to that. So that won't take too long, but we are gonna upgrade Armstrong. He goes up in a ton of stats and he just becomes an absolutely incredible, incredible card. So a 90 overall point guard. So I'm just gonna have a look to see what Daryl Armstrong goes for on the auction house at that price, because we did pick him up for like 3K MT. So color Amethyst. Okay, so 50k, 36k. Okay, so he goes for roughly about 32-ish k. I could probably sell him for, which is a fair amount of MT. So this is our actual squad. He's in here. He's gonna go in as my starting point guard. And the real question is going to be: Is he any better than Charity Ward? That's going to be the real question. And also, I'm going to spend 20k MT on one player. And there's a reason for it. It is because he is a just god. So I'm hoping that I can get him for it cheap. So I know yesterday he was like 19 KMT. So I want to see what's the cheapest price I can get Jerry Sloan for. Because if you guys don't know, he's got Quick Draw, one of the best releases in the game. Period. Like 18k, 19k, 18k. Okay, so the cheapest he is up for is 18k. I'm gonna see if I can snipe one of them. I wanna see if the fil auction filter works because sniping has become really, really difficult this year because of the filter is just not working. Okay, the 20K filter works, perfect. So I'm going to try snipe him for a minute or two. Okay, so we haven't been able to find a snipe. We still are getting a steal on this card, especially because realistically, unless Daryl Armstrong's a beast, I'm just gonna sell him. So he's going to come in and replace probably Gerald Green, who's gonna replace, uh, I'm gonna take Miles. I have to take someone out of squad and I wanna keep Ray Allen, I wanna keep Hagen. Oh, who do I wanna get rid of? That is the tricky question, because I really like Gerald Green. And all three of these guys serve a purpose at the end of the bench as well. So I'm going to have to get rid of green. Even though I don't necessarily want to, I'm going to have to get rid of green for Sloan. And I probably made no profit there whatsoever because of um, the contract situation. But Jerry Sloan has got a three-point shot of 85. He also has got Hall of Fame off-ball pest. And he's also got um, gold. Um, what is it? The gold... Quick draw, which is unbelievable. His release is money, and he's such a good card in game. And Daryl Armstrong, again, if he's good, I'm gonna keep him. If he's not, I'm gonna sell him. He's got an 87 three-point shot. He's got an 89 mid-range shot. He's got 92 ball handle, 95 driving dunk. He's got unbelievable speed to ball and acceleration. He's also comes with 31 gold badges, which is unreal, including floor general, dimer, and quick draw. So this guy, sh this guy could and should be a beast in game. So anyway, yeah. Now let's go on to the game. Okay, so we are playing Michael Carter-Williams, Desmond Mason. We're playing Upgrade, Darius Miles, Mirasan, and Lamarck Aldridge. Luckily enough, Mirasan got a big nerf today, so we should be okay. And yeah, I'm confident enough in this team. All right, let's attack right to the basket. Let's go, Armstrong. That's a good dunk to start the game. He's got no shooters, is he? I got a uh, Mason's an alright shooter, but like, I'm fine and I'm jacking threes with his Darius Miles. I look, I already got the board and got a score out of it, but that's not gonna happen too often. Wide open. Ooh, his release gets a lot faster with quick draw. Good shot there by Armstrong. His release is kind of slow before it. My team is not a great defensive team at all. I don't have the height to play defense. Like Channing Fry is our defensive anchor and he's not anything spectacular. We're okay when Charlie Ward's on the floor because he's got the defensive leader badge, but yeah, we don't have much in terms of like stopping guys like Mirasan. That shot should not have gone in, like. Come on, let's get the Armstrong. Okay, he's not stopping us at all. 
He's just not playing defense right now. Armstrong's too quick for that. Good thing with Mirasan again is he's got like 60 stamina now, especially because the way he's playing full court in him, he's going to be tired very, very quickly. And he's also not, because he's playing full court trying to get guard the inbound pass to Mirasan, it means that I've got a clean lane to the basket every single time. Good job. Oh, that's a tough shot. But it doesn't matter. Daryl Armstrong hits another shot. He has 12 points in the first two minutes. Has not missed yet. It's fine. It's a good shot. I was unlucky there. It was a good snatch back. Armstrong's way should be way too fast for Mirasan. Right to the basket. Daryl Armstrong puts in the layup. My god, this card is good. Who knows? Maybe he could be worth keeping for the 30k or so he goes for. I don't think he'll be worth it, but he might just might be. And we left him wide open. That's off, 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 full bar glitch. Let's go. Let's push it. That is a good thing, though, about seeing the other team shot meter. You know when they've been hit with full bar glitch. And another dunk for Daryl Armstrong. He is 16 points, has not missed, and it is 16 to 6 for him against the other team. They help in. Go to shooter in the corner. Three. Not a great release, but we hit it with Jerry Sloan. That is 19 to 6 lead, and we forced a rage quit. That is, ser that is a serious, serious start to the game right there. Uh, lads, I know this is completely irrelevant, but we're getting a diamond Chris Webber today. We are getting a diamond Chris Webber. I'll probably have talked about the diamond Chris Webber card before this card come before this video comes out, but that is incredible. It's gonna be unreal to get a card like that. Like Webber has always been a great card in game, and we're playing against the same guy again. Okay, this is gonna be another easy win. There we go. Like the fact he keeps pushing up on the ball handler means he's literally got nobody to guard this. No matter what he does with the matchups, he's got nobody to guard me just running straight through with um, Daryl Armstrong. He's just going to get dunk after dunk after dunk. So the Spotlight Series packs, I genuinely think, or the Spotlight Series challenges and everything, are some of like the coolest things in the game this year. Like Spotlight Series Kevin Durant Garnett obviously comes today, and you do get the Emerald Kevin Garnett, which eventually will probably become an Amethyst, or at, I say at worst an Amethyst, at best a Diamond. And I know those cards are grind to uh, level up, but that's the thing, is you can get these unbelievable cards by grinding. You don't need to spend money on the game, and the best cards in this game don't come from spending money. And that's why I made the video yesterday, where it's like, people are like, oh, if you don't want to spend money, you have to grind the game. It's like, well, yeah, of course. Like, you can't just get the best players, like, non-stop. That's the way this game mode is. And it's not like Star Wars Battlefront, where you, um couldn't even play with, say, Darth Vader unless you put in money or grind the game. It's like, in the specific game mode of my team where you're creating your team, yeah. But it's like, if you want to use LeBron, you still can. Use regular rosters. There's there's ways to use every player. But, uh, all right, this guy obviously has a bit more of an idea now of what I'm going to do. So we are just going to light him up. Good shot. Good pass there. Good shot by Channing Fry. We got Dimer and Floor General on Armstrong, so he's going to make all the other players better around him. Got him jumping. All right, he's jumpy. Uh, let's press him. I just want to tire his Mirasan. Make him have to run at me with him. So, wide open. Green. Good shot, Jerry Sloan. He has one of the fastest, nicest releases in the game. He is a must. A must pick up if you've got the MT. Like, if you've got MT right now, I normally say save your MT and keep your team as cheap as possible. But I can't see him going until Christmas, maybe. I can't see him going much lower than 18k MT. If he does, and you do lose it in a bit of MT, I'm sorry, full white, damn. Um, but he's going to be worth it. I cannot see too many better just pure spot-up shooters in this game than Jerry Sloan. Like, there's going to be better cards in the game, yeah, but just for the purpose of spotting up and shooting, you can't get much better than this. Oh, it's open. That's a, a full white glitch, damn. Ah, oh, come on. As soon as you release that, you know it's off because of that glitch. That still people think doesn't need to be fixed because, quote, shooting is perfect. The full white glitch exists and people still think shooting's perfect. I just don't understand where that comes from. Every, like, everything else in shooting's perfect. Like, non-greens going shouldn't or are going at a fine rate. Greens, obviously, it should be a bit of a skill gap, but the no, uh, the full white glitch needs to be taken out. Let's go, Larry. Well, the floater, good job. I don't know why on fast breaks, 
it's just become a habit of mine to put up floaters because it seems like other shots just get stolen and blocked too much for no reason this game. That is why I don't full white damn. That wasn't a glitch full white, but it was the, the full whites do go in at a very, very low rate. So if you do shoot them, it's, there's like a 90% chance it goes in, but it's not like the glitch full whites where it's a literal full white and there's a 0% chance of that shot going in. Let's tag the basket. We're struggling shooting, so let's get a few easy baskets here. Okay, so we are back up to a four point lead. The defense. Oh, we should have got that steal. They're right there. Go get it. Go get the board. All right, so we are still up by two. Hey, look. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, and we're still ahead. That's the way I gotta look at this. I hate games like this. You know when you just feel like no matter what you do, you're screwed? That's when, this is one of those games. It's like, it doesn't, like I can shoot open shot every single possession and feel like nothing's gonna go in. I hope he runs into this gap again. And we predicted that one to be thrown a little bit earlier than it was. I'm good though, it's covered basket. It's fine, this guy's just throwing risky pass every, risky pass is every possession. I don't leave Conley. Why did you go to Leitner and leave Conley? I'm fine with Leitner getting the ball. I'm fine with him shooting. I'm not fine with Mike Conley shooting the ball. That's wide open for Charlie Ward. Green right back at him. All right, we needed that one. Protect the basket, protect the basket. That's fine. He's thrown, that's going out of bounds nine times out of 10. And this is another, he's only down four and he rage quit this time. He knew he was gonna lose this game. Let's put in this guy right here. I really like using Hartenstein because he's long, he's lengthy, he gets boards and he's a little bit quick. I really like using him as like, just a rebounder and triple threat. Some people like using the likes of Ben Simmons. I think Hartenstein's better for that. All right. I did not see who was guarding him. I think it's Danny Ainge. Bounce back, knocks it down. Okay, Armstrong has got, his release is so fast that it's very unlikely to shoot a full white. Either it seems to be green or a bad release, which is really good because you'd rather have a bad release than a full white in this game. These normal full whites don't go in at a high rate and literal full whites are glitched. Which is why I think Daryl Armstrong might be a complete lights out shooter. Okay, let's back off a little bit. Let's go. That's fine, it's off. Nope, 77% contested. Yeah, full whites can go in if they are smothered or contested though. Just not when they're wide open. Oh, nice dunk there by Armstrong. I can see him getting these 21 points quick here. This guy cannot guard him right here. Shoot that, I dare you. And again, he has not released anywhere close to green yet. And for that reason, he's hit two of them. The basket, good job, Armstrong. Like literally, if we can have enough if we, don't, if we don't concede enough and get enough offense, we'll win this game. But my defense, especially in triple threat, is bad. My defense isn't good at the best of times. In this game mode, it is horrendous. And we jam it on Christoph Porzingis. So, Darren Armstrong's really good. I'm not going to keep him. I'm going to sell him because I think that that 30K is going to be used else, could be used better elsewhere. And also that I think there are alternatives that are not that much worse. Daryl Armstrong is better. He is, don't get me wrong. If this wasn't a no money spend account, I'd be keeping him. I'd keep him in a heart. Like there's no chance I'd sell this guy if this wasn't for a no money spend series. But the reason is I think that 30K MT, especially in two or three weeks time is gonna be worth, or not in two or three weeks time, two or three months time is gonna be worth a lot more. I can't see him going up in price at all. No matter how good he is, I can't see him going up. And I can see there being, like he's better, for example, he's better than Robert Pack, and another bounce back that goes in. This guy is the king of bad releases, and bad releases are good releases in this game. If you can release consistently bad in this game, it is as good as releasing consistent greens. But I've been trying to figure it out. I cannot release consistently bad in this game. To the basket, easy dunk there for Armstrong. So I think that he's better than Robert Pack. He's better than Derrick Rose, but I don't think he's enough better than both of them to warrant having 30K held up in him, whereas the other two guys are free. And also he's gonna cost a lot more for contracts because Amethyst does cost way more than even Ruby. Like the gap between Emerald and Sapphire is 40, the gap between Sapphire and Ruby is 40, the gap between Ruby and Amethyst is 160. So, Sapph they're so expensive. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure they skipped a tier with 400, charging 400 for contracts for um, Amethyst should really be 300, but look, it is what it is. Daryl Armstrong is unbelievable. An unbelievable player. 
but we are definitely going to sell him and we are definitely going to make a massive massive profit on this card he's going to be the kind of like for the amount i get from this card i'm going to be able to get jerry sloan and when they do come out with some more overpowered cards another probably two to three really overpowered cards or i could get maybe 10 ruby cards that might break into the team for the sake of one guy who's only slightly better than cards i already have so yeah we are going to go into premium i'm probably going to go and at some stage Oh, there's no point like he's not as good as like his sapphire is not as good as robert pack even though his sapphire is a beast let's have a look to see what he goes for in the auction house so daryl armstrong just have a look again because there's not that many amethyst to this card up so amethyst daryl armstrong he is 34.9k 35k so i'm gonna just sell him for a little bit under i'm gonna go and sell him for 33k and that puts me well over the 100k mark again. I've been over 100k a few times. And also, when I sell a lot of these cards, 33,550, yeah. When I sell this card, well over 100k. Sell all these cards, could be close to 130, 140. And eventually, I'm going to be selling Rick Smith as well. I think he goes for like 40, 50k when he's fully upgraded. Well, when he's upgraded to Amethyst. So, it's going to be a case of me getting close to 200k MT, I'd say. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.